Welcome to our build series for our 4 inch scale Burrell DCC traction engine kit by Steam Traction World. For this video we will be showing assembly of kit 10, the belly tank. Following the usual cleaning of all parts, the tank sides, top, ends, and bottom, and all internal bracing parts were cleaned and soaked in POR15 metal prep according to the directions. This prepared them for the waterproof coating to be applied later. Parts were test fitted loosely before final assembly began. For final assembly, the top and rear panel were bolted together first with the supplied rivet bolts. One bolt was inserted and loosely tightened near the center of the pieces. Additional bolts were then added, moving outward from center every few inches, wherever bolt holes aligned. Additional bolts were then added throughout until all holes were filled. Any holes that did not align were left until all other spots were filled and tightened. The nuts were tightened a little at a time along the entire part. Once all were tight, any unfilled holes were carefully drilled out to correct any misalignment, then those bolts and nuts were also added. the internal bracing brackets were added. During the test assembly, we noted the steering gussets did not sit fully perpendicular to the bottom panel. We verified this again at this stage of final assembly and noted no change. Knowing the steering shaft would be supported by bearings mounted to these gussets, we thought it important to correct the misalignment as much as possible. We 
We had a belt sander with built-in disc sander on the side. After checking that the guide table was perfectly aligned perpendicular to the sanding disc, we used this to carefully sand the mounting flange of the gusset until it formed a 90 degree bend. We did this to both gussets, then checked them on the assembly. Now both gussets were perpendicular to the bottom plate. The left and right side panels were prepared by tightening small bolts into the fitted threaded holes around the tank access cover. These will form studs to later attach the access cover to the panel. We had one threaded insert that came loose in transit. For this one, we tightened the bolt and added a nut on the outside. A dot of high strength adhesive on the head helped lock it in place on the panel. POR 15 was brushed over the head to further seal it in place. Before adding the front panel, we decided it would be a good time to apply the POR15 tank sealant to the joints between the three panels and around all internal brackets. This allowed us to easily brush it into all crevices between the panels, which would have been difficult or impossible otherwise once fully assembled. A minimum of two coats were applied with light sanding between coats. We coated the panels up to within an inch of the edges where additional panels were to be fitted. We found the largest misalignment of holes between panels in the curved area that will fit around the boiler and at the ends where the four panels curve around to create a mounting point for the left and right side panels. Some holes pulled into alignment as we added more and more screws between them. Some required drilling out to correct the alignment. A few places required a blow or two with a small sledgehammer with a block of wood between so the panel was formed but not damaged. Some large bar clamps were also useful at times. The bolts on the curved section that will sit beneath the boiler had their holes countersunk so the heads would be flush with the surface. Some heads had to be ground slightly to take care of any raised edges. It is easy to over tighten and strip the rivet bolts, so we work slowly and carefully to avoid damaging any bolts. The belly tank bracket was bolted to the front panel. Before adding the left and right side panels, we brushed the POR15 onto all uncoated surfaces and joints that we could reach. While attaching the side panels, we had to hammer down the corner bends a bit more 
for proper alignment of the panels. Large bar clamps were also used along the diagonals to help square up the ends enough to get some bolts started. More POR15 on the final uncoated areas helped complete the assembly of panels. There were two dummy bolts I forgot to add to the horn plate brackets prior to priming the assembly. Paint was cleared off and two bolts trimmed down to fit. These were then attached to fill the respective bracket holes using some high strength retainer. All brass parts were cleaned and polished. Painting began, including paint over the polished brass builder's plate. After allowing ample time for the paint to cure, lining began by taping off the various lines with appropriate thicknesses of tape. Sections of tape were removed to uncover the proper width lines for painting. Some areas required touch-up or freehand lining after the tape was removed. The hose bracket was attached to the right side panel. Next came the water filler assembly. There is a brass backing plate that the upper bolts thread into to secure the upper part of the filler assembly. We found the curve of the tank front and top panels did not correctly match the shape of the filler. Because of this, the bolts were not long enough to engage the threads in the filler. We purchased longer bolts of the correct size locally, which solved the problem. The filler was then securely attached to the tank. The brass elbow that will connect the belly tank to the tender was installed in the bottom panel. The toolbox hinges needed to be assembled with the included hinge pins. After this, the hinges were secured to the toolbox rear wall. Next, the lid was attached, followed by the toolbox clasp. We discovered one side of the box was slightly higher than the other sides, preventing the lid from closing completely. The clasp also bound on the slot and the lid. Each issue was solved by filing the top side edge of the toolbox slightly as well as filing the slot for the clasp a bit wider toward the hinges.
We very carefully sanded the top surface of the nameplate after painting to reveal the brass lettering and outer frame. The exposed brass was further polished. I managed to scuff the paint around some of the letters, so I applied some touch-up paint, and once dry, the entire plate was sprayed with a clear coat protective finish. Once dry, the builder plate was attached to the front of the toolbox, then the toolbox was bolted to the belly tank. After squaring the box to the front and sides, the bolts were tightened. There is a short and long vent pipe that is attached to the top panel. Note the proper position of these parts on the drawings. The short vent is mounted on the side with the toolbox. These parts were polished and clear coated before installation. This completes the belly tank assembly for now. Coming up next in our series, we'll show construction of Kit 7, the tender.